This program is brought to you by Emory University. Toy Story, John Lasseter directed in, in 1995, everything fits together. And the genius of Toy Story was they focused on something that they knew CGI could do really well, which is non-humans. Now you see human beings, right? You've got the bully kid and you've got Andy. But the majority of the screen time goes to the toys themselves, and the toys don't have to conform with our expectations of what a human being would look like. So they can look plastic, because toys are plastic. You compare that to Toy Story 2, and you introduce the toy collector, and there's this marvelous scene right, where we open on his hand, and we travel up his hairy arm, and we see pores in the skin, and we see the little bumps where the hair attaches to his arm, and you have a character now in the film that isn't a toy, he isn't made of plastic, he looks like flesh and blood, because between Toy Story and Toy Story 2, this dramatic, revolutionary, rapidly evolving industry had finally crossed into the range where you could start to have a human being that looked not like a real human being, but enough like a real human being that we kind of bought it. The Toy Story franchise is fun because you can look at the three Toy Story films and you can see the evolution of CGI as a cinematic tool. I also think that prior to Toy Story, the Disney thing was unchallenged. You have Don Bluth, but Don Bluth is a Disney defector, and he's making films that are essentially Disney-like, uh, Secret of Nim, American Tale, Land Before Time, basically feature-length animation. Disney owned that action, which meant feature-length animation didn't look like CGI. Feature-length animation looked like what Disney did. And there was a fairly safe assumption that audiences wanted, if they wanted to watch a cartoon movie, they were only going to watch it in the theater if it looked like a Disney movie. Then along came Toy Story. Complete game changer. Since 2000, we have released more animated features to theaters than in the entire preceding history of cinema. And the reason is, Toy Story proved that we could make an animation via computers that audiences would respond to. And because of that, the floodgates have opened. And we, you know, we have the Madagascar franchise and the Shrek franchise, but also we have lots of one-offs that didn't do so well. Space Chimps, who saw Space Chimps? Um, and Disney's partnership with Pixar was a great symbolic moment because when Disney says we can't beat them, we better join them, it is an acknowledgement that the world of animation has been overturned. What used to be this marginal visual effects technology, not marginal, it was important, but um, even into the mid-1990s, even into the late 1990s, um, for the visual effects work in films, we were not relying solely on computers, and we certainly weren't relying solely on CGI. So really what Toy Story did is it created an environment in which a relatively marginal part of the world of visual effects rapidly became the dominant mode of animated theatrical entertainment. Toy Story is not the first all CGI feature film. It is not the first use of CGI to create characters, um, but in 1995, Toy Story is the first time that CGI is used successfully to create the kind of story world that audiences understand as a fully realized environment and those three films together, the three Toy Story films, you know, they, they constitute enough a franchise and, a, and a, a kind of a narrative trio, but they, they also encapsulate 
the uh, sort of the transformation of film animation in the 21st century. The preceding program is copyrighted by Emory University.